Well, hello, everyone. Good afternoon on this May 12th. It's a beautiful day. We hope that you, your families, our students, and our community, that everyone is safe and doing well. We'd like to wish all of our mothers a, a happy belated Mother's Day. We hope that you felt appreciated for the, the role and the job and the career of motherhood. We, are, we appreciate our mothers. Without our mothers, as I shared in a tweet I did on Sunday, our school system would not exist. So thank you, mothers, and happy again, belated Mother's Day. We'd like to welcome our deaf and hard of hearing community. Thank you for participating, and we'd like to welcome Mr. Gonzalez, who's assisting us on today as well. I hope that everyone is doing well. I hope that you are uh, adjusting to the extent that you can to this, this new norm. The month of May is moving right along. We're all, all already almost halfway through it. And so we thought we'd come back and share some critical information relative to our school system with you. Feel free to let others know that we're having this session, but we'll also post it immediately afterwards for those who may not have the opportunity to participate. So again, welcome and thank you for your attention, for your participation and for your support. This is our fourth live message. Today we're using YouTube versus face, Facebook and we hope that the quality of the video is better. Hopefully I look a little better and Mr. Gonzalez looks a little better uh, and you can hear us clearly and we, we know, we know that our community really appreciates the opportunity for these live updates. Just a few things that i like to share on today. It is so important, so important that we recognize that this pandemic has created an opportunity for all of us, for us as a school system, for us as individuals, for our families, for our community, for our county, for our state, for our nation, for our world. And as humans, we should learn what we can from every situation and take full advantage of, of these opportunities. And so I want to use today as our opportunity, collective opportunity, to show and share how we're getting better as a school system through this pandemic. Today, I want to spend some time talking about our virtual closeout and how we're planning for the new year. Always starting with safety first. So I want to encourage all of us to always remain safe as we still are in a pandemic. And while we're reopening, businesses that, that, will, that are reopening are opening, I want everyone to continue to be safe, follow, follow the CDC guidelines, Follow and adhere, protect yourself from being exposed to the extent that you can to the virus. Minimize your risk. I know that there may not be a 0% risk, but minimize it as much as possible. Remember to uh, social distance to the extent that you can. While I'm not wearing a, a face mask today, I carry one and I wear one as I'm out and about shopping, as I'm interacting with people. And so I encourage you to the extent that you can to do the very same thing. Remember as a school system, we will be adhering to our social distancing guidelines and those guidelines for employees will be released as we prepare to bring employees back in the upcoming uh, weeks and months. And of course, when students return to school, we will be sharing guidelines as well. We know that this pandemic has impacted our state in very significant ways. Uh, there have been over 33,000 cases and over 1,400 deaths. Georgia seems to rank 10 when we previously ranked 12th in the nation. We want to encourage everyone to continue to pay attention to the local coverage. And let's remind all of you that you can always go to the district's website and see our webpage for the coronavirus update. It's a very comprehensive, informative 
web page. So please take full advantage of the website. The district is closing out virtually. What does that mean? We are doing what we can to ensure that students complete their term, earn their grades, teachers post those grades, principals bring closure to the year for our seniors so that we can graduate them and then move on preparing for the next school year. Professional learning this summer will be virtual. Our operations team, while we have limited persons who are working right now, within the upcoming weeks, we'll share our decision to reopen and our process for how that will occur. We are preparing for next school year. All of the families that are new to Clayton County, we have online registration currently in process and progress. And we want you to know that if you're just moving to Clayton County, you can get your child registered to attend our schools. Always feel free to go to our website and you will see on the quick links on the left side of the page, quick links. The first one is online registration. And so those of us who are familiar with Clayton County that have children enrolled in Clayton County, if you meet new people and new families, uh, you can share with them that they can register their children online here in Clayton County. You should know that this summer we'll be spending a lot of time on professional learning. Not only are our teachers going to focus on how do we continue to teach in this virtual environment, as we extend learning beyond the classroom, but we will be focused on social emotional learning. This situation, even before this situation, but now that we've got to deal with the new normal of social distancing, we're dealing with virtual instruction, increased collaboration, our district recognizes that there are feelings of loss, isolation, depression, and stress being experienced by everyone, students, staff, parents, superintendent, everyone experiencing increased levels of stress. Therefore, in order to successfully redesign our school system to be a culture and climate of high performance, we're going to address the needs of our students, our staff, and community from the perspective of social emotional learning in order to teach, reach, and to support the needs of all stakeholders. What is social emotional learning? It promotes well-being, connectedness, and the success of every student and every adult. It helps develop self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, and social awareness. In addition, social emotional learning addresses strategies for stress management, how to manage that stress, problem solving, how to think critically, and the needs of learners to bring together assessment and instructional solutions. Social emotional learning provides options and alternatives for us when it comes to discipline problems, emotional distress such as anxiety and depression, attitudes about self, others, and school, low social and emotional skills, social inequality, and inadequate achievement. Social emotional learning also targets all learners and adults who support student learning. It develops social emotional competencies. It helps to create safe and supportive schools, families, and communities. Environments where students can thrive, are respected and respectful, and where everyone engages in active learning. Social emotional learning also helps us to develop feelings of empathy. It helps us to develop our skills for building and maintaining relationships. It's really about mindsets, growth mindsets. It helps to promote emotional intelligence 
culturally responsive pedagogy or teaching, restorative practices and restorative justice, mindfulness, character education, and parent academies, support groups, and the like. Clayton County Public Schools, we realize in order for us to redesign our district to be one that has an environment that really supports high performance, we must address the social emotional needs of our students and every adult within our school system and our community. Therefore, when you return as students in the fall, social emotional learning, thinking, doing will be very foundational to what happens in our classrooms. It's not anything extra. This situation, probably the most recent situation has shown us that we've got to ensure that we are all well emotionally before we can learn and go to higher levels of performance. And so I just want everyone to know that this summer, staff members will be engaged, teachers and all will be engaged in training for social emotional learning, while we also are training on how to use the tools that we have to ensure a highly effective instructional environment in a virtual setting or face-to-face. So I'll pivot very quickly to instructional updates. The last day for instruction was on Friday, May 8th. However, students and parents and teachers and principals should be working together collaboratively to bring closure to this semester by May 21st so teachers can post their grades on May 22nd. So teachers and principals are still available to our students and families during this time, although instruction ended on May 8th. Let's take full advantage, full advantage of our opportunities to bring a good closure to this semester. I expect students for you to have done your part and for you to be successful in your classes. We're preparing for summer learning opportunities. So I'll share very quickly what those opportunities will be. Credit recovery for our high school students that need to make up credit. We will have online credit recovery. So pay attention to your emails and most importantly, take action once you receive those emails. And students, don't forget, all of you have emails. Parents, if we have your email addresses, you get this information and always remember, you can go into an infinite campus and all the announcements are posted in Infinite Campus. So there's no excuse for anyone to say that they're not informed. But once you get informed, young people, parents, please take the necessary actions relative to these summer learning opportunities. We will have many summer opportunities. Our summertime STEM camps are going to be planned for the month of July the week of thir July 13th through the 17th and July 20th through the 24th for our Summer Bridge, Advanced Learning for All Summer Bridge. Again, all of this information, and we'll post it again after this update, but all of this information is in your email, it's on Infinite Campus, it's on the website. So take full advantage, but take action, take action. We'll also continue with our summer reading initiative, Clayton Reads. We expect all of you to be reading this summer. So again, we'll be sending more information as reminders. All of us must continue to read, stay informed, and continue to develop your critical thinking and your reading capacity. Parents, please, we encourage you to help our students to read over the summer and to keep a reading challenge log. Again, we'll send this information out to you again using the email and all of this information will be posted on our websites and we post much of this information on our social media sites. Advanced placement. 
Don't forget, young people, those of you that are signed up to take the advanced placement, the exams are from May 11th until May 20th. We have provided a tool, a device for all of you because the, uh, the assessments, the exams will be online. So, so those students who are signed up for advanced placement, you should have what you need, but let me encourage you, practice. While you're at home, take advantage of your online resources and practice and do your best because remember, if the college accepts advanced placement scores of three, four, or five, you may earn college credit. And so do your best on those advanced placement exams. I want to thank federal programs for the school supply kits that were recently distributed to support our online learning that's occurring. Kudos to the federal program staff and to our maintenance department. And I must say to our maintenance department, they have been quietly working to deliver food, to shift food from one location to the next location, to ensure that grab and go meals are continuing. They work very closely with our school nutrition department. Our maintenance department has been cutting the grass, making sure our facilities look good while we're away from the buildings. And so I want to say to our federal program department, to our maintenance department, thank you for what you're doing. And of course, to our school nutrition department, they have distributed over 295,000 meals as of March 16th, or since March 16th. Beginning May 29th, the Atlanta Community Food Bank will expand its partnership to provide grocery services to families throughout the summer. And so while our school year is ending, we will have summer feeding and we'll continue with the Atlanta Community Food Bank sites. Pay attention because some of the sites will be adjusted. So pay attention to the announcements because as you know, we had 23 sites during the semester. We'll have a reduced number of sites over the summer because many churches and others are also doing food sites. And so we encourage everyone to pay attention to those announcements. We want to thank our principals for working with all of our seniors to prepare for graduation. We know proms have been canceled and I'm sure schools are doing very creative things and families are doing very creative things to create those moments. And I encourage you as families to continue to do those very creative things to create those moments for our children. But we have surveyed all of you and we have decided as communicated that we'll move graduation from May to June 25th and 26th. We're also preparing for a virtual graduation if we see that the face-to-face -face graduation cannot occur. We heard your feedback. We planned accordingly. So let's hope, let's hope that this pandemic is on a real, real downswing, downturn, flattening of the curve so we can have face-to-face -face graduations. But in the event that we cannot, we will have the virtual graduations and those schedules have been clearly communicated to our community. So as we bring this year to a close, as we prepare for the summer, we're also preparing for the fall. Our board on May 4th approved for us to lease devices so that all of our students can get a device in grades three through 12 and we'll have laptops and other devices for our students in grades kindergarten through the second grade. And we'll be rolling out a pre-K initiative as well, more information to come. Our goal is to ensure that whether you come back face to face or we have to continue with virtual learning, in Clayton County, we are extending learning beyond the classroom. That's what we call it here in Clayton County. 
We understand that many districts are also doing the very same thing. And so we hope that we don't have issues with district distributors and any delays, but we'll keep you all informed. But our board has already approved for some extending learning beyond the days to go into our calendar. And if we need more days because of the pandemic or surge, we will designate those days accordingly and we'll inform you in a timely manner. As we plan for the 2020, 2020, 2021 school year, we're redesigning for a culture of high performance. So I want all of us to get ready. We're rebranding our school system. We're rebranding re how we do things. This pandemic has shown us we've got to think well beyond tradition. And so here in Clayton County, that's what we're doing. So we're redesigning. Not only are we going to be focused on social emotional learning, not only are we going to be one to one and all of our students will have devices, but we are going to continue with our advanced learning for all. We're expecting students to take advanced placement. We're still moving forward, forward with our eighth graders who will be taking algebra starting not this year, but the following year. Our sixth graders this school year will go to seventh grade and in their eighth grade year, there'll be an algebra, but we're moving forward with high expectations. Why is this, is, why is this important? Why is it important? It's important because this pandemic has shown us that the education that we have in, as individuals and our families, it does matter. It does matter. We can't, as I've heard, count on anybody to save us. We must save ourselves. And the only way we're gonna save ourselves is we gotta be a community. We've gotta make sure we're educated and we've got to work together. And so you see young people, when you come back to school, it's time to make sure you have a plan. Families, it is time. It, the day is over where we talk about we may get a high school diploma or we may get a college education. Listen, that day is over. If this pandemic hasn't shown you how the game changer is education, then you're not paying attention. Then you're not reading. This pandemic has shown all of us that education is the game changer. This pandemic has highlight, highlighted many inequities at every level. But one thing is clear, the level of education, the level of education has directly impacted equity or the lack of equity. So we're expecting in Clayton County, all of our students, every student to get an education. We're expecting our seniors, as you're preparing to graduate, you need to get you some post-secondary credential. It can be a degree, it can be a certificate, you've got to get some training and you've got to prepare for your future. Remember, this is not the first pandemic the world has ever had. It's the first one in our lifetime, but it's not the first one. There was one in 1917, 1918. There's one now in 2020. And make no mistake, there will probably be more pandemics in the future. We must learn from this situation. As a community, we're working to address all the inequities because we will not allow our students, our community, to be negatively impacted by these inequities. We're stamping out the inequities wherever we find them using the resources that we have. Now, since I'm mentioning resources, let me say this, Clayton County, as your superintendent, and you all know I, I take this role very seriously. The census has been going on this spring. April 1st was the date for the census. It's been extended. As of today, 51.9% of the households in Clayton have completed the census. That is a far cry from 80%. Now, I don't know about you. Well, yes, I do, because you are like me. 
you know we need the federal money, you know we need the representation, and you know by now that it's all connected to the U.S. Census. Do not, as a community, put us at a disadvantage for the next 10 years because we did not follow through with completing the census. So I'm going to act like a father right now and tell all of you, we can't complain as a community if we have a lack of federal funds, if we have a lack of federal resources for our Clayton County Board of Health, for our highways, for our uh, roads, for if we have a lack of representation, we can't complain if we don't get the census done. And I'm gonna always remind people when they say we don't have this and we don't have that and we don't have federal funds, listen, we've gotta complete our census. Listen, community. So I need all of us contacting all you, your, 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 your relatives and your others in Clayton County. Ask, ask them, have you completed your census? Our children will be impacted our community will be impacted by the census, out, census outcome. So I need us after this update, if you've not completed the census, get it done. Next, as I come to a close, voting. Early and advanced voting was postponed from May 19th to June 9th. Now I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for, but I'll tell you all this. If you let this situation stop you from voting, believe you me, believe you me, and I'll get really emotional. There are some folk out there who are not going to let this stop them from voting. So you let other folk vote and you don't vote. I don't want to hear and we don't want to hear any complaining about how messed up it is. If you don't vote, you better get out there and vote. I'm telling you all, it is a matter of life and death. If this pandemic has shown us anything. Voting is a matter of life and death nowadays. So get out there and vote. You, you vote for whoever you want to, but you better figure out who that is that has your best interest in mind. You better figure out what your agenda is and who your agenda is aligned with. Don't just pick one issue and vote on one issue when your community needs tons of issues done. Get out and vote. And they may not, you may not agree with everything a party stands for, but agree with most of the, what the party stands for. If nothing else, use that to vote. Do they stand for most of what I stand for? But get out there and vote. Our community has to be engaged. So as I close, I want to just say some thank yous. Thank you to these departments that have been working throughout this pandemic. The, School nutrition, our maintenance department, business services, our nurses, social workers, counselors, teachers, principals. Thank you. Our volunteers, thank you for watching out for Clayton County, for stepping up to the plate, doing what we needed you to do. I don't know about you, but Clayton County has been leading during this pandemic. Our Board of Education. At, they've been handling business, moving forward with what we need to get done. Our Clayton County commissioners handling business, moving forward. We've been meeting as a county, all the elected officials weekly, moving forward, minimizing the impact, the negative impact of this pandemic on our county. So I don't know what you think, but Clayton County has been leading. Our school system has been leading. And we need to appreciate. Let me tell you all something. If you think other folk are going to save you, then you hadn't been reading and watching the news very well. Nobody's coming to save us. We better save ourselves. And if you think that it's better somewhere else, then you hadn't been looking. You got to make what you have the best. You got to make your location the best. The grass is not greener on the other side. It just looks greener. But if you go over there, it's full of weeds. You got to learn to appreciate what you have. Appreciate your neighborhoods. Appreciate your county. Appreciate what you have. 
You're living in one of the safest counties in America. Yes, Clayton County. And you know why some of you don't know that? Because you don't read it. You let other people tell you stuff that's not true. Other folk love to put down certain communities, but I'm telling you all, I read the data. This is one of the safest counties to live in, in America. We have one of the best school systems in America. And I mean one of the largest school systems and the best school system. And you don't have a bad superintendent, if I may so, so, say so myself. You got a great staff. Your board is working for you. Listen, you all, we better learn to appreciate what we have. What I've learned is if you don't appreciate what you have, sometimes you have to do without it. And then it's too late. We've got to appreciate what we have. We're fixing it. We're getting out, getting rid of the inequities, but appreciate what you have, your principles, parents. And I wanna say this to you, I'm gonna say this as a, as, a, as a taxpayer. Don't come back fussing at my teachers. Don't come back fussing at principals. They have worked diligently. It is time, whatever we had before the pandemic, whatever attitudes we had before the pandemic, it's time for a new attitude. It's time for a new approach. Young people, it's time to do things differently. It always disturbs me when I see people go through life-changing situations, but they don't change for the better. We have to change for the better. And so I want to encourage all of us. Remember, I started out a few weeks ago. Maintain your peace. Find your purpose. Determine your priorities. Plan. Pray. Ponder. But I'm going to say this to you now. It's not a peak, but I'm going to tell you all this. It's time to take it a moment at a time. It's time to change. It's time for families to change. There should be no increase in violence in our community. We shouldn't have child abuse going on in our community. Mothers and fathers fighting in front of children in our community. It's time to change. Why? Because our children deserve better. Somebody say, well, you're not their pastor. I am the superintendent of this school system responsible for 55,000 children. And if I can't tell y'all some of that carrying on doesn't need to happen in front of children, I don't know who else can. And so I need families to pull together. Y'all figure out what you need to do as a family. But it's time to pull together and love each other. It's time to make sure that our children are safe. It's time to get connected to our schools. It's time to do things differently. It's time to education become a priority. Parents, mothers and fathers, if you have children, you can't afford to tell them education is not important. Don't set your children up to be the, the lower classes in our society. They have to get an education. They must get educated. And parents, if you're not educated, it's time for you to get educated. Why? So you can put your family, yourselves in a better position. It's time to go back to school. It's time to get your GED. It's time to do whatever you got to do. There are many online schools. We've got Clayton State. We've got Atlanta Tech. We've got uh, uh, Atlanta Metro College. There are many colleges. It's time for all of us to get educated. There are no, no more excuses. And let me say this to, you, to all of you. This is just your superintendent, so y'all forgive me if, if, I, if I offend you. While I know our children need tennis shoes, let me, let me tell y'all this. Before you go into a line and put yourself at risk to get a virus for tennis shoes, take that money, go online and open up a savings account and start saving for their college education. Families, and somebody said, well, that's not your right. It's my right to say what I need to say today because it takes a mindset. Every family in Clayton County right now, before this week's over, you all should go online and find a way to open up a savings account for our children and start saving, whether it's five dollars a month. You say, well, we got this pandemic going on. Listen, I come from a family and, and, and all of us come from a legacy that we had a, a whole lot less than what we had. And we made it. And we secured more. And make no mistake, everybody knows I'm African-American. Since 1965, African-Americans have come from way down, didn't even have much of a middle class to most of us in the middle class. 
And that's with laws that wasn't necessarily always in your favor. So I know things can change for the good. But you have to make a decision. I'm not saying we don't have to live. We've got to live. What I'm saying is let's think differently. Let's get a new mindset. Don't allow what we have been to determine who we are. Let's get a mindset, a mindset of progress, a mindset of being educated, a mindset of being first class, a mindset that elevates us above violence, a mindset that elevates us above anything that tries to diminish us. And I want to say this to our, our community. As we look around and see what's going on in the world, there are a lot of protests going on. But let me say this to you all as a superintendent. I expect our children to be safe in this community. I expect them to jog safely. I expect them to live safely. I expect us and all of us grown people, us adults, whatever it takes for you to get over your biases, get over your biases. Give people the benefit of the doubt. Follow the law. Adhere to law. Remember that children deserve to live. Treat people the way you want your children to be treated. Treat people the way you would want to be treated. Get over the sickness of racism. Get over the, the sickness of ignorance. Let's elevate ourselves as a community. Whatever it takes, we ought to be better. We ought to be better. And if you're going to fight and protest for something, Get out there and protest for what's right. And I'll say this, a lot of folk are focused on their individual rights. Remember, before you have individual rights, you've got to understand that you have responsibilities. We've got to make sure that our health care workers are OK. They are on the front lines. So I need all of us to make decisions to make sure that they're OK. When we come back to school, I want our teachers to be OK. I want our principals to be OK. I want our secretaries to be OK, our custodians, our lunchroom workers. So I need all of us who are so focused on our individual rights. I need you to understand that in order for this society to operate orderly, we've got to have responsibilities. All of us have got to be responsible. So if you're going to protest and that's your right to protest, like it's my right to say what I'm about to say. Be mindful that other people are, are needed to help all of us. You, you can't live in this society alone. It takes all of us. If we're going to protest, let's protest that we take care of our essential workers, that they get higher pay, that they get health insurance, that they get essential pay. Let's treat people right. Let's get a state that has access to health care for all. It shouldn't de de depend on your zip code whether or not you have access to health care. And let me say this to everybody out there. Well, we all, we can't pay for everything. No, we can't, and nor should we. But this society and those of us who vote, we should vote into office those individuals who understand that there are certain things we will expect. We will expect. We will expect law and order. We will expect representation. We will expect health care. We will expect opportunities. And so as your superintendent, I just want you to know I may have found my, my voice in this pandemic, but I want you to know I love all of you. But I want our community, our society to be better. Young people, I want us to be better. When we come back to school, come back with a new disposition, a new attitude. Come back, parents working with teachers. You say, I didn't have a good experience when I was in school. Leave the past in the past. Everybody ain't against you. We're here to help children be better. All these employees, I don't know of any employee, any teacher who comes into education to harm students. And those who try to harm students, they don't stay here very long. We get rid of them. So I want to encourage all of us. Get a better attitude. Stop thinking the worst of each other. Think the best of each other. Come with goodwill toward each other and allow that to show up in our society. Get rid of all this racism. 
Get rid of all of this racism. Get rid of all this racism, all this classism. I'm folk, uh, some of us who have been, had the privilege. Listen, you didn't select your family, just like a poor child didn't select his family. So you're not better than anybody. And no sense in taking pride in the color of your skin, like your skin color is better than everybody. Listen, if you study science, all of us come from the same. Some of us just darker than others because of, 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 of life and because of the environment. Your skin color doesn't mean anything. Your money doesn't mean anything. Our children, all children deserve to have access to education. All children deserve to have access to health care. And so y'all come out of these mansions and these seals houses and learn to take care of everybody before we don't have anything to take care of. Those of us who are educated, learn to fight for those who are not educated. And when situations happen that are unjust, you don't just speak up because it's a black or a white person. You speak up before un injustice against injustice because it's the right thing to do. It's time for all of us to say something. It's time for all of us to speak up. It's time for all of us to do better. It's time for all of us to come together. And if we can't come together, in wisdom we'll perish together as fools. It's time to come together. It's time to do better. Time to do better. Thank you all. Forgive me if I offended you. Don't email me if I did, because I'm not responding to you. Because I said what was on my heart. As a matter of fact, share what I said and make you a plan, an action plan, like I'm making me an action plan to do better and to be better. It's been a great day. Have a great May. Have a great summer. Stay safe. Continue to do good and good will follow you. Take care.